Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Gigabyte TRX50 Aero D. So this is one of the three Threadripper, so this is the Threadripper TRX5 sockets. So this is one of the Threadripper non-pro motherboards that was available at launch. So this is the, actually this is the most cost effective one. The price point on this at launch is $599. So the other, the ASRock and the ASUS are going to be more. We're going to take a look at this one. This is the one that intrigued me the most because as somebody who is a long time user of HEDT, you know, think like Sandy Bridge E all the way till now, HEDT has been kind of out of the market for a number of years. Therapor 3000 was kind of the last one. Therapor 5000 was just pro and Intel's sort of been missing in action for a while when it comes to HEDT. All right, just to kind of show what's in the box here. You get a kind of a handout here. On the right side, we have a display port to display port cable. This is for the Thunderbolt add-in card that is soldered onto the motherboard. If you want to do display port in from your graphics card, you can plug one of these goes to the GPU. The other one goes into the motherboard. Next we have four SATA cables and it looks like two are right angled and two are just straight through. Then we have a microphone to tune the fan profile on the motherboard. And then these look like some kind of temperature sensors. I'm not sure exactly which one what these are, but that's what's on this side. And then on the right side, on the left side here, we have the Wi-Fi 7. That's right, this motherboard features Wi-Fi 7. Wi-Fi 7 antenna on there. And then two more, so it looks like four more SATA cables. So a total of eight SATA cables. That's actually pretty nice uh, because we have eight SATA ports on the motherboard. So you can actually populate all eight of them and not have to look for any old cables. And then of course the Gigabyte G connector for the power, the reset switch, those things on the front, the front panel connectors. So let's move on to the motherboard. The ASRock and the ASUS boards for Threadripper, or at least for the TRX50, are a little bit more workstation oriented. So if you wanna build a workstation, then yeah, those two motherboards are probably gonna be really good options. But if you just wanna build a true high-end desktop, that has no compromise in terms of PCIe lanes, SAT out connectivity, USB 4, that sort of thing, then I do think that this is probably definitely worth considering. Okay, taking a look at the board here, you can see that it has some serious VRM heat sinks on here, all of this around the top, around the top half of the CPU. That's all VRM cooling. We have two. M.2 drive slots here, as well as two more down here, three of which are Gen 5 capable. The fourth one is Gen 4 capable. Uh, and then we have three PCIe X16 physically and X16 electrically. That means that there is no compromising on plugging in multiple PCIe devices into these. So for example, if I plug in a GPU in this top slot, it's gonna get 16 lanes up to PCI Gen 5. Now currently, there are no Gen 5 GPUs, so it would be X16 Gen 4, for example, for a 4090 or an AMD 700 XTX or any GPU. Meanwhile, if I plug something in down here, like a second GPU or a capture card or a uh, RAID card or a, you know, a 4x4x4, by four, like a 4X NVMe add-in card for RAID or something, I could get all 16 lanes for every single one of those M.2 drives while also still maintaining 16 lanes on the GPU. So I would have 16 Gen 5 for both of these. This is full Gen 5 X16 bandwidth, no compromise. The bottom slot here is a Gen 4 16 lane slot. So this is full 16 lanes, no compromise, but it's Gen 4 bandwidth. All three of these slots connect directly to the CPU, 
bypassing the chipset, resulting in the lowest latency possible. We have four RDIMM slots. If we take a look at the board here, you can see four DIMM slots. These are RDIMM, so these are registered DIMMs. That's going to result in ECC memory being required for this motherboard. But the nice thing is it's four channels. So we have quad channel memory. Just like the traditional HEDT of years ago, we have quad channel. So what that means is that each DIMM for RAM has its own channel. That means that you can run higher speed RAM without any issue if you populate all four of the slots. So think of this motherboard as like a two DIMM motherboard for AMD Ryzen or Intel Core. This is something like an ROG Gene. A two DIMM motherboard on AM5 would actually equate to a four DIMM motherboard on Threadripper. If you had a four DIMM motherboard on Ryzen or Intel, uh, Intel Core, that would be an eight DIMM motherboard on Threadripper. Moving on to the back here, for the I.O., we have a Q-Flash, we have Wi-Fi 7, it looks like eight USB ports, four of which are USB 3.2 Gen 2, and then we have four USB 3.2 Gen 1, I believe. I think, in general, these are going to be five gigabit USB 3. The red ones are going to be 10 gigabit USB A. And then we have a display port input here, and then we have line out microphone. So it would have been nice to see more uh, audio options, but realistically, most people are going to be using DAX and not even using this. Then we have a 2.5 gigabit NIC and a 10 gigabit Marvell NIC here. So you have 10 gigabit and 2.5 built in. And at the bottom here, we have two 40 gigabit USB 4. So that means we have the Intel JHL uh, Thunderbolt card soldered onto this motherboard directly. And the, the dead giveaway is the fact that we have a DisplayPort input right here. So these two along with this indicates that we have the Intel Thunderbolt controller included in this motherboard. That's another thing that I think differentiates the Gigabyte Aero Threadripper board from the ASRock and the ASUS. If you wanted Thunderbolt or USB 4 on ASUS or ASRock, you would have to go with an add-in card provided that those motherboards have the, the header to install it, and it would also take up four lanes. It would, it would take up one of the PCIe slots, but those motherboards do have a lot of PCIe slots, so that shouldn't really be a problem. Dual eight pin for the EPS. We have the debug LED. We have the debug LED there, so it's nice. You have a power button, 24 pin, fan headers, four SATA. These SATA go to the CPU. Then we have four more SATA. These go to the chipset. And then we have a USB 3. The plugs here for the power and reset button and the LEDs. More system fan headers at the bottom. Old school USB 2 headers for front panel or AIO coolers and RGB and that sort of thing. Then we have some debug stuff here and then the audio. So overall, this motherboard is quite interesting. I think this one is the most balanced choice for someone who is really looking for a high-end desktop motherboard and doesn't really need the things from the enterprise or the server world that you could get on the ASUS or the ASRock motherboard. So I really think that Gigabyte did a lot of thought into this motherboard and they actually came up with something that I, I really think the target buyer for Threadripper is most likely going to benefit and make use of all the things that this motherboard offers compared to one of the other uh, similar Threadripper motherboards. So we're going to be doing a build video on this featuring the Threadripper CPU. So if you guys are interested in this content, please like the video and hit that bell icon or get subscribed to the channel if you're someone who is interested in PC DIY videos. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. And once again, thank you all for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.